In this video, I'm going to be doing a quick summary of This Side of Paradise by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Book one of this book is called The Romantic Egotist. We begin with chapter one. The first character we come across is named Beatrice Blaine. She is Amory's mother. Beatrice is everything a woman should be. She's beautiful, she's young, she's very intelligent, uh, though she has a very dreamy side and tends to drink. Amory's father, on the other hand, doesn't come into the picture barely at all. They live in Wisconsin. The next and main character we're introduced to is named Amory. Amory is handsome, he's everything a woman would want. He's very intelligent, and he's basically the 1920s babe boy, which is why I have drawn him with that stylish hair that every boy seems to have these days. His mother Beatrice allows him to drink and smoke at a very young age. Amory has auburn hair and green eyes and loves to write poetry. He has a distinct idea of what a gentleman should be and aims to be exactly that. After all that is established, we move on and Amory is sent to Minneapolis to live with some of his relatives. At this time, he meets a girl named Myra at a party and they kiss, but their love is not meant to be. There's a good bit of development at this point in the story. After he and Myra kiss, Amory displays sudden passion and anger, which foreshadows to a character trait he will display later on. Amory grows up a little and is now 15 and is sent to St. Regis... Well, whatever, to go to high school. Before school actually starts, however, he visits a family friend. The friend is a Catholic priest whose name is Monsignor Darcy. He becomes Amory's mentor later on and helps him through some pretty rough times. Amory's first few years at high school are really bad. Everybody thinks he's a jerk, which he is. He does, however, read some good quality literature and debates a great deal. Chapter 2 is called Spires and Gargoyles. This chapter title is inspired by Princeton College, where Amory attends. Here, he meets two of his closest friends, Carrie Holiday and Byrne Holiday. The two are brothers, and Amory becomes fast friends with Carrie Holiday. His brother Byrne drops out of the picture until later on in the book. Amory and Carrie are both very big pranksters. At this point in the story, we're introduced to Amory's next friend, Thomas Park Donvilliers. Thomas is your definition of a standard nerd. He loves literature and poetry, and he becomes one of Amory's best friends. Amory's life consists of books, theater club, and petting parties. It is at one of these parties, which are basically just for making out, that he meets his first girlfriend, Isabel. Isabel is his first fling, his almost introduction to the world of love. From the text, we can see that at first, their relationship is basically nothing but fluff. Amory has to leave the section of town where Isabel is, however, and they're separated by distance. Amory writes a great deal of poetry during this time. Soon after, a friend and role model named Dick Humbert is killed in a car accident, which scars Amory for life. However, he and Isabel are reunited and finally kiss at the climax of the chapter. The next chapter is called The Egotist Considers. Immediately after their kiss, Amory and Isabel fight and they break up. Amory sinks into a rut of depression and lack of motivation. He also gets some terrible grades which don't help at all. He does, however, talk to Monsignor Darcy. And after a pep talk, his motivation is high again. There's a short incident at this point of the book where alcohol may or may not be involved, but it's rather unclear. Amory may or may not have seen the ghost of Dick Humbert or someone who looks exactly like him and chases him, and it scars him for life. Chapter 4 is called Narcissus Off-Duty. Amory and Tom are still BFFs. Amory is also enjoying some debate with Burn Holiday. And now enters a new character, Clara. Clara is Amory's third cousin and is widowed with two children. Amory attempts to have a thing with Clara, but is friend-zoned. Toward the end of this book, there is lots and lots of poetry. Here, book one ends, and we have the interlude. The interlude is a short section consisting of letters and poetry. The first letter is from Monsignor Darcy to Amory, who is now in the army. Darcy's letter concludes with poetry, and Amory's begins with poetry. After the interlude begins book two, The Education of a Personage. The title comes from a conversation between Amory and Darcy. This is where things start to get interesting and very deep. Chapter one is called The Debutante. Here, the writing style changes to that of a play. Amory is staying at his friend Alex's house, where he meets the all-important Rosalind. Rosalind is what Amory calls his first real love. Rosalind is quite a mean girl. She's rude to her sister Cecilia and is very spoiled and has very, very expensive tastes. He accidentally meets her in her room before a party. Instantly, they click and within minutes are kissing. 
Weeks pass in bliss, and the two seem made for each other, but once again, it's not meant to be. After weeks of practically pretending to be married, both become miserable, and Rosalind opts for a richer man over Amory. Chapter 2, Experiments in Convalescence, sees Amory fall into depression and unhealthy drinking habits. The prohibition of alcohol halts his drinking, thankfully. He resumes his debates with Tom and writes more poetry. In Chapter 3, Young Irony, Amory travels from New York to Maryland and there meets Eleanor. Eleanor is the last woman Amory attempts to love. She's described as having green eyes and being quite a witch or a tomboy. She's as wild as wild can be. The two love over the summer, but they break up after Eleanor attempts to throw herself off a cliff, which can cause some difficulties. Chapter 4 is entitled The Supercilious Sacrifice. The title comes from an incident where Amory takes charge of an illegally present woman and almost gets arrested. Three tragic events happen at this time, Rosalind's marriage, Darcy's death, and Amory's lack of income. These three things cause Amory to sink into a final bout of depression. Chapter 5, The Egotist Becomes a Personage, consists of deep thoughts and a debate between Amory and a stranger he hitchhikes with. The novel ends as Amory ponders youth, college, and Rosalind, and concludes with the statement, I know myself, but that is all. And that is my summary of This Side of Paradise by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.